There we go. Yes, Commander? Nothing. Carry on, Presley. Yes, sir. <laughs> Best this change of dialogue. Oh. Actually, let's go meet the gal. Yes, Commander? Is there something you need? I should go. Goodbye, Commander. Oh. Commander, are you coming to check up on me? Yep. You look much better. How are you feeling? Dr. Chakwas assures me I am going to be fine. I was impressed with her knowledge of Asari physiology. She's the best. You're in good hands. Dr. Chakwas knows what she's doing. I get the feeling you want to ask me something, Commander. Maybe we could pick up where we left off. You were telling me about your interest in the Protheans. Actually, I think I was talking about my interest in you, and making a fool of myself in the process. As I said, I am not used to dealing with people, especially humans. I did not really know much about your species when we first met uh -huh. you. I found it hard to take humanity seriously. Your kind always seemed so rushed and high-strung. I'm sure we did. But we don't have the luxury of time. An Asari can live for a thousand years. We're lucky if we hit 150. That is true. At first I thought that was a weakness of your species. After spending time with you and your crew, however, I think it may actually be an advantage. You humans are creatures of action. You pursue your goals with an almost indomitable determination. It is an admirable trait, but also an intimidating one. Thanks for us. Can't argue with results. No, but there are consequences. Unfortunately, the rest of the galaxy sees humanity as a bully. You run over anyone who gets in your way. It is up to people like you to change their minds, Shepard. Me? Why me? There is a reason the Council chose you to become a Spectre. They saw something special in you. The best of what humanity has to offer. I looked into your history. I know what happened on Akuz. The fact that you survived shows a remarkable strength. You could have asked. You didn't need to go behind my back. I would have told you whatever you wanted to know. I apologize, Commander. After our last conversation, I was afraid I would say something stupid again. I wanted to know more about you. To understand what made you into the man you are. There is something compelling about you, Shepard. Are you sure you're interested in me? Or is it my visions of the Protheans? I admit, your connection to the Protheans had something to do with my initial interest, but it has grown beyond that. You intrigue me, Shepard, but I was not sure if it was appropriate to act on my feelings. Yep. I thought there might already be a relationship between you and Chief Williams. It's not serious. Williams and I are just friends, nothing more. My mistake, then. I am not as adept at understanding human relationships as I thought. But what about us, Shepard? Is there a mutual attraction, or was I wrong about that, too? No. There is something between us. Yo! I knew it, and I knew you felt it, too. But does this not seem rather strange? Why do I feel so close to you? We have only known each other a short time. We are from two different species. We have almost nothing in common. This makes no sense. These things never make sense. They just happen and we get swept up in the storm. You make it sound so chaotic, so dangerous. I'll keep you safe. I am not looking for a protector. This is all a bit overwhelming. I am not used to this. You, I need some time. 
Take all the time you need, Liara. I'll be here. Thank you, Shepard. Let's... Let's just talk about something else for now. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. Yep. <laughs> and there she goes. It can't be a Bioware game without any sort of romance options. I am just fucking sure of that. Something there. Maybe it's just the squad lockers. Oh, before I go, you said you're serving with Commander Shepard now? We saw him on the news here. He's cute. Later, sis. Tell me you didn't hear that. Sorry. I'm afraid I did. <laughs> oh, shoot me now. One of my sisters. That's Sarah, the youngest. Surprised to see you here, sir. Thought you'd be chatting up. What's her name? To Sony? Yeah. Liara. Why would you think that? Scuttlebutt says you got a bit of a thing for her. I could understand why. The crew's off limits with the regs against fraternization. And at least she looks like a woman. You think I'm interested in Liara because she's the only one I'm allowed to date? So you are interested in her? Yep. Yeah. Of course, it could be politics. Alien diplomat's daughter, us under orders to make nice with the bug-eyed monsters. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Your family seems to be important to you. Yeah, we've always been close. Me and my sisters especially. With dad on duty so much, I have always been there. Must be nice. You're lucky to have a close man. Or lack thereof. Relax, Williams. I've dealt with it. Ask me to clear a bunker of armed hostiles? No problem. Dealing with a foot in my mouth? Not so good that. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. That was gone a lot. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? And Dad always wanted to serve us, <clears throat> but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I have enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that love me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known, cities of men, and manners, climates, councils, governments. Read poetry. I never thought I'd hear you reciting poetry. Just because I can drill you between the eyes at a hundred years doesn't mean I can't like sensitive stuff. Just don't spread it around. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. It's a good piece. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Oh shit. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching though. So behave. You mean from wherever we go after death? Dead on Skipper. He's with God now. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Not my place to judge. Your beliefs are your business. I'm your commanding officer, not your moral compass. Just my commanding officer, huh? We'll have to see about that. Mm. I look forward to our next talk. We should. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. We'll talk later, Williams. Looking forward to it, Skipper. We'll see about that. So, we've got Saren on the run. Yeah, we do. It won't be long now. Saren's good, but I'm better. Good. He's rotten. To the core. I could
to tell as soon as I met him. In his turn? Why didn't you tell me this sooner? I would have if I thought it was important. Huh? I think I'd like to hear about it just the same. This was a while ago. A bunch of mercs were bragging about a job out near the edges of the Terminus systems. They said it paid well and the boss was never around to ride them. They said he was looking for more men, too. So I checked it out. Not recruited me? I didn't know Saren was openly recruiting mercs. It wasn't that open, and he only showed his face once. We'd been raiding ships in the area for months when we took out this massive cargo freighter. Our biggest haul yet. I was on board checking bodies for valuables, looking for some extra credits. That's when I saw him. What was he doing? What did Saren want with the ship? I don't know what he wanted. He was just moving through the ship, watching. A couple of the mercs called him by name, but he never spoke to them. Never spoke to anyone. I had a really bad feeling about him, so I got the hell out. Didn't even wait to get paid. That's it? That's the only time you saw him? Yeah. Didn't even know who he was. Still wouldn't if I hadn't joined up with you. But my instincts were right. Every other merc on that mission turned up dead within a week. Every damn one. I see. So long, Rex. Shepard. Let's see what he has. Looking for supplies? Yep. Let's see what you've got. You bet, Commander. Reaper 7. Banshee 7. Scimitar. That's a shotgun. Let's sell some shit. You know, we're getting into the sevens now. Might as well just sell him. Okay. Looking for supplies? Not right now, thanks. No problem. Keep checking back. I should really go and check out the uh the space thingy with the council. I actually need to talk to Sonny or whatever her name was. Them. My business was still not done. <clears throat> Tidy, not Tidy. Shepherd, I'm glad you're here. Are you feeling better? You're smiling again, so to speak. I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Steren's our top priority. But with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. Oh, cool. What are you hoping to find? Usually people bring back something like a derelict ship we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. There's a lot expected of me. Why? What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. 
My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Your royalty. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. Preferential treatment. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies. And they're not above using me to get to him. That's a little pressure. It must be tough on you. My people place a high value on family and ancestry. There's an unspoken expectation that I'll live up to my father's example. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed. And that reflects badly on both me and my father. What if we save the galaxy? The work you're doing here is more important than anything any Quarian has ever done before. Yes, I know. But you have to understand Quarian culture. We're a very insular society. The events beyond the flotilla don't much matter to the average citizen. Our greatest dream is that one day, we'll return to our homeworld and drive out the Geth. But even if we stop Seren, that's not going to happen. There's still millions of Geth behind the Veil. Until they're gone, our exile will continue. So what's the answer? What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Seren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First, we stop Seren. Then I'll worry about my own problems. I should go. See you later. Okay. Let's talk to Garrus. Commander, how are you? You're in CSEC. Why did you want to be a CSEC officer in the first place? Hmm. That's a good question. There were several reasons, I guess. Chaz? Like what? Probably the same as most officers. I wanted to fight injustice, wanted to help people. I guess my father had something to do with it, too. He was CSEC, one of the best. I grew up hearing about his accomplishments or seeing his picture on the vids after a big arrest. He's taking my resignation pretty hard. I can understand that. That's tough, but you'd think he'd be impressed you're going after Saren. My father's a CSEC man to the bone. Do things right or don't do them at all, he says. He thinks I'm being too rash, too impatient. He's worried I'll become just like Saren. He actually talked me out of becoming a Spectre when I was younger for the same reasons. Spectre? You were asked to be a Spectre? Well, I was targeted as a possible Spectre candidate. Me and about a thousand other Korean military recruits. I could have received special training, but my father didn't like it. He despises the Spectres. He hates the idea of someone having limited power with no accountability. He wouldn't like you, Commander. No offense. I see. I suppose I can understand his concern. You can. But Saren's not going to play by our rules, CSEX rules. If you want to nail Saren, you need to send someone who isn't restricted by policies and procedures. True. Just because you can break the rules doesn't mean you should. I don't need to stoop to Saren's level to stop him. And neither do you, Garrus. I see what you mean, but... I'll think about it. Thanks, Commander. Ooh, level up. I don't know if you could fully upgrade everything. Now let's go to ah, wherever the fuck we were going.
I think we need to go back to the Citadel, actually. Look around there for a minute. I forwarded the mission update to the Citadel, Commander. We got confirmation on those reinforcements. Ambassador Udino wants us to report back to the Citadel. The Council's massing a joint species fleet to deal with Saren and his Geth. Good. I knew they'd come around. Back to the Citadel, Joker. I want the Normandy at the head of that fleet. Yes, sir. Oh, so we're going there anyway. Fantastic. Moving that fucking light made this camera look mm, fucking amazing. Hopefully I'll have a, a bit of time to actually walk around the citadel. Normandy. Hey there. Good job, Shepard. Thanks to you, the Council's finally taking real action against Saren. The Ambassador is correct. If Saren is foolish enough to attack the Citadel, as you believe, we will be ready for him. Patrols are stationed at every mass relay linking Citadel space to the Terminus systems. What about Ilas? Or Ilas, or whatever. How many ships are you sending to attack Ilos? Ilos is only accessible to the Mule Relay, deep inside the Terminus systems, Commander. If we send a fleet in there, the only possible outcome is full-scale war. Now is the time for discretion, Commander. Saren's greatest weapon was secrecy. Exposed, he is no longer a threat. This is over. What about the conduit? Secrecy isn't his greatest weapon. The conduit is. Saren is a master manipulator. The conduit is just a distraction from his real plan to attack the Citadel. What about the Reapers? Sovereign's the real threat. Saren's just a servant of the Reapers. Only you have seen the Reapers. And then only in visions. We won't invade the Terminus systems because of a dream. Give me after him. One ship going into the Terminus systems won't start a war. I can be discreet. You detonated a nuclear device on Vermeer. I wouldn't call that discreet. Your style served you well in the Traverse, Commander. We recognize that. But Ilos requires a deft touch. We have the situation under control. What? Secrecy isn't his greatest weapon. The conduit is. Saren is a master manipulator. The conduit is just a distraction from his real plan to attack the Citadel. If Saren finds the conduit, we're all screwed. We have to go to Ilos. Ambassador Udina, I get the sense Commander Shepard isn't willing to let this go. There are serious political implications here, Shepard. Humanity's made great gains thanks to you, but now you're becoming more trouble than you're worth. You bastard! You're selling us out! It's just politics, Commander. You've done your job, now let me do mine. We've locked out all the Normandy's primary systems until further notice you're grounded. Mistake. Are you insane? After everything I've done, you still don't believe me? I think it's time for you and your team to leave, Commander. This no longer concerns you. The Council can handle this, with my help, of course. Next time, wear a fucking small GoPro on that fucking piece of armor. Just because, you know... I hate being right. About the council? Okay. I wish I could say I was surprised. I was surprised Udina bought into it. I guess he's like any other politician. The council's used to being the biggest kid on the playground. They don't want to believe Daddy's coming to pick them up. And eat them, I guess. And give up. I don't care if I have to go to President Huerta. I won't sit back and wait for the Reapers to start killing people. Whatever you come up with, you can count me in. I know I'm not the easiest person in the world to get to know, 
So, I'll do you a favor. Just this once. I want you to be happy. Whatever you need, I'll help. There. You made me say it. Boom goes my feminine mystique. I know you can. I've had a hell of a time figuring you out. But I think I have. I want you to be happy, too. You better. What the hell? Sorry to interrupt, Commander. Got a message from Captain Anderson. Are you listening in? Are you spying on us, Joker? No, sir. Just knew you were on the ship and figured I'd pass the message on. The captain said to meet him at Flux, that club down in the wards. Sounds important. You'd better go. Ship hands. Mmm. I think actually both of these are fairly good. I think I'll take both of them. Equalizing interior pressure with exterior atmosphere. Never really passed my mind. Logged. The commanding officer is ashore. Exo Presley has the deck. You're having problems there, mate. What weapons is he trained with? Pistol, a uh, shotgun, and assault rifle. Okay. No gas. Okay. Good enough. After years of poor economic performance, Exogeny has announced that its research colony on Pharos is finally returning a profit. New discoveries and a dedicated colonization effort have finally paid off for Exogeny. Exogeny's stock rose sharply with the announcement, with investors pleased at this surprising news. Nice. I need to buy some armors for these guys. That thing in my ear. Bloody hell. 
You not not do that. Having trouble. Well, it is a very old game. Don't expect it to work fascinatingly well. You sure you want to do that? Police have been seen in Aljalani, Western Lanier. Would you answer a few questions for our... What do you want to know? You've been given a unique position to represent our race. Don't touch your butt. People want to get a sense of how you'll do that. Humans have been trying to get the respect of the galactic community for 26 years. With that in mind, what are your feelings on being the first human specter? Spectres represent the best of every species in the galaxy. To be asked to join them is an honor. Some have said your appointment is the Citadel throwing humans a bone. Have you encountered any situations where the Citadel asked you to place its needs before the needs of Earth? It's not like that. The Council is concerned with the needs of the whole galactic community. We're part of that community now. Our needs are on their agenda, but we're one of many. You really do believe that, don't you? You've been given command of an advanced human warship for your missions. Is there anything you'd like to say about it? The Turians build help it. The Turians help build it. Actually, the Normandy was co-developed by human and Turian engineers. Its design incorporates many innovations, all of which are classified, I'm afraid. So, the Turians have knowledge of the Normandy that is being kept secret from the Alliance public? Do you think it was appropriate to hand Earth's most advanced warship over to the Citadel? The crew is still the Alliance. I wasn't aware it had been handed over to anyone. I'm in command, and last I checked, I'm human. Same goes for my crew. Human, yes, but you do work for the Citadel now, Commander. Speaking of your new job, did the Council order you to sabotage human research concern on Novaria? There was an accident. The Council had nothing to do with it. There was an accident at Binary Helix Labs. In the interest of protecting the company's confidentiality, I can't say more. That's a surprising revelation, Commander. We've had nothing but stonewalling from Binary Helix. Given your recent experiences, do you think humanity will ever get the respect it deserves from the galactic community? If we have it. Respect's a funny thing. People always assume they deserve it. The truth is, respect is earned. And I firmly believe we can earn it. You're an idealist, Commander, but a sincere one. I hope you're right. One last question, Commander. Rumors back home say you're tracking a rogue specter named Saren. Do you have any comment on that? It's behind Eden Prime. Saren instigated the attack on our colony at Eden Prime. Once his involvement was proven to the Council, I was assigned to bring him in. That's... surprising, Commander. The official line says Eden Prime was attacked by rogue synthetics. Good luck in your mission. Thank you for your time, Commander Shepard. Yeah. Acquisition office. I think we should go there. see a few civilians hanging around the academy waiting to speak to an officer. One sec, looking you up. How many fingers do you have? Hello, Commander. Three. Show me what you've got. Sounds good. Just let me set you up. Well, this must be a mistake. System's telling me to offer you our select stock. Spectre? Well, I... Heard about that, but I didn't realize it was you. Sorry, Commander. No problem. Just show me what you've got. I'll open the rare stocks for you, Commander. Enjoy. Yeah.
Oh my god, the nice shit. That's a sniper rifle. Cooking six. I want to buy that. I'll buy that. Many things. Okay, give him, yeah, that. Well, let's get some armors for you, eh? I forgot that this place had fucking elevator music. Urgh. A Solarian excavation team has run into an unexpected problem oh, cool. after unearthing a Prothean dig site. Hanar protesters have blockaded the dig site, claiming that artifacts of the Enkindlers, as the Hanar call them, should not be disturbed. The excavation team has appealed to Hanar representatives on the Citadel to reach a diplomatic solution. <laughs> Well, I went the completely wrong way. Where there was only darkness, the Enkindlers gave light. <clears throat> I I'm telling you, this is not what Jake would want. I don't care what you think, Michael. It's my decision. 
I know you're hurting, Rebecca, but don't let your grief hurt your baby, too. Is that a problem? Can I help you with anything? Perhaps you can talk some sense into her. I don't need anyone to talk sense into me, Michael. I'm not undergoing the treatments. My sister-in-law here is pregnant, and she's refused to let the baby undergo gene therapy in utero. That's your son. I'm certain that she has a good reason. I'd like to hear both sides. My husband Jacob died from a rare heart condition several months ago. There's a chance that the baby could develop the same heart condition, but routine gene therapy can eliminate it. A very small chance, Michael. And extranet reports say the therapy could harm the child. It's less dangerous than the genetic enhancements that every soldier in the Alliance receives. Vaccines cause autism is basically the same fucking argument. And the extranet is most definitely the internet. So she googled, does gene therapy cause autism? That's a disease. What are the chances that your child will develop the heart condition? According to the doctors, there's a 1 in 50 chance. And if my baby develops the condition, medical treatments are available. Which are nowhere near as effective as simply getting the gene therapy. Dangerous therapy. What are the chances that gene therapy could hurt the baby? One in 300 at most. But extranet articles say there could still be long-term complications we don't know about. Don't you understand? If my baby is that one in 300, I will always wonder if I... If, if I killed my baby for nothing. <sighs> I'm going to be even worse than that fucking argument. Oh god. Ah. Uh. I think gathering statistics on how many people believe that the internet is right. That's basically also the question, do we want lab-created children? Well, the chance of the game is 1 in 50, the other is 1 in 300. So mathematically, it's safer to get the treatment rather than and I'm a man of logic but I'm also a man of heart and I know that a mother knows best but the internet tends to lie let's say get the treatment for what it's worth I think you should consider undergoing the therapy I don't care what you think. Who are you anyway? It's my child. It's my decision. That's it. Wouldn't your husband have wanted to give the baby a better chance than he had? But what if it ends up killing a child who would never have developed the condition? What then? It wouldn't be your fault. Then you'll know you did all you could to keep your baby safe. That's all you can do. Don't you understand? I can't lose this baby. This... This is all I have left of him. And you and that baby are all I have left of Jacob. I can't lose you. Either of you. Not after this. <coughs> then why didn't you just say that instead of yelling at me? I was scared. I'm sorry. If it means that much to you, if you trust that it's the right thing, I'll do the therapy. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess we needed an outside person to talk some sense into both of us. <laughs> How do you? Let's put him on. I need him. 
Emporium Shopkeeper. Commander, it is good to see you again. Would you care to see some of its fantastic items today? Yep. Show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Non-human armors, that's what I want. Oh, it's a guardian. Ooh, those are expensive. I would have taken them, but I don't have the money. Commander, show me your items. Oh, this one is pleased to do so, human. You will not be disappointed. Fine enough. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 3. Here in the Financial District, a number of businesses offer various goods and services to their exclusive clientele. The statue you see before you was commissioned to honor the Krogan soldiers who gave their lives to protect Citadel space during the Rachni Wars. In the aftermath of the Krogan rebellions, several embassies petitioned to have the statue removed. However, this motion was eventually quashed by the Council. Krogan Rebellions. Tell me more about the Krogan Rebellions. In recognition of their efforts during the Rachni Wars, the Krogan were granted several new colony worlds by the Council. Over the next 400 years, the Krogan species began to expand. Blessed with an extremely high birth rate, their numbers began to swell. Faced with a critical overpopulation crisis, the Krogan started a violent colonization of nearby worlds inhabited by other Council species. The Krogan rebellions had begun. For a full century, the Council and its member species fought to bring the Krogan under control. With the aid of the newly discovered Turian Empire, they were ultimately successful. Seems like a vicious cycle. You needed the Krogan to stop the Rachni, then you needed the Turians to stop the Krogan. So who's gonna stop the Turians? I am sorry, but that question is beyond my programming parameters. The Turians are members of the Citadel Council. They are not a threat to galactic peace. Oh, that's, that's a really clever metaphor, if you... If you could possibly think of it that way. Because, um... The Thurian... Who is, uh... Who's this guy? Uh, main villain with the S. So you all know about Star Wars. I don't remember his name. That's how bad he is. Saren. Oh, Saren. So Saren is a Turian, and that is a threat. So finally, the humans. A.K.A. I and my ship are going to stop him, which means that that was a cat. Anyway, um, it's a clever little thingy. Why did the council fight so hard to keep the statue? The Krogan were instrumental in saving the galaxy from the Rachni threat. The council believed this historical fact should not be forgotten. The Council also hoped that preserving the memorial would improve diplomatic relations with the Krogan and bring about a peaceful resolution to the rebellions. Unfortunately, the Krogan refused to negotiate and only surrendered after their population and homeworlds had been ravaged by the Turians. Rachni Wars? What were the Rachni Wars? Nearly 2200 years ago, Explorers seeking to expand Citadel space opened up mass relays leading to systems controlled by the Rachni. Mm. A highly intelligent and aggressive insect race 
The Rachni unleashed a war of conquest against the rest of the galaxy that lasted for nearly three centuries. The emergence of the Krogan finally turned the tide in favor of the Citadel species. Krogan forces provided the numbers necessary to halt the Rachni advance and drive them back. The Krogan then pursued their retreating fleets. Able to survive the harsh environments of the Rachni homeworlds, the Krogan hunted their enemy to extinction. That's a little extreme. Was it really necessary to wipe them out? I am sorry, but a value judgment of that nature goes beyond my programming. That's all for now. Thank you for using Avena. Have a pleasant day. Yay. There's a lot of keepers. See the devil rapid transit. That's enough. I've had my office rearranged five times now. Five times? But why? What do they want? How should I know? It's not like keepers offer an explanation for what they're doing. And yet, everyone just lets them go on doing whatever it is they do. What choice do we have? If you try to stop them, they just shut down and another one replaces it. Just strange that we know so little about them. Not to mention frustrating. Welcome to Presidium Tourism Terminal 1. There are many points of interest here, including the Citadel Embassies and CSEC Headquarters. On the far end of this level, you can see the Citadel Tower, where the Council meets regularly to discuss matters of interstellar importance. I want to know more about Citadel Security. <laughs> Citadel Security serves as law enforcement for all regions of the Citadel, though the majority of officers serve in the wards. Executor Palin, a Turian, is the current head of CSEC, but individuals from virtually every species across Citadel space serve as officers beneath him. If you wish to learn more, Executor Palin's office is located in the CSEC headquarters just across the lobby. Embassies. Tell me about the embassies. Each species in Citadel space important enough to be consulted on matters of galactic politics maintains an embassy on the Presidium. The Volus were the first non-council species to be granted an embassy, roughly 2,384 galactic standard years ago. As Citadel space has expanded, more embassies have been added. The most recently added embassy belongs to your own species, humanity. It was added 19 galactic standard years ago, despite some rather vocal opposition. Oh, I think we've heard this. Goodbye, and thank you for using Avena. Please enjoy your visit to the Citadel. You know what, actually, I think. Bloody hell, this is quite enough for today. Alright, God. Let me just play some tune. Uh, 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 uh. What's this going to sound like? Seems fairly nice. Anyway, that's all for today. I um, hope you enjoyed whatever you managed to catch of that. Um, anyway, I will be back tomorrow for Friday's broadcast uh, with Artsilo4. 58 I think yeah it's somewhere around that number if you would like to get notified for future streams I have my follow button right there which you can press immediately to get all the notifications you would ever want or if uh, you want to get more notifications than normally you would like to follow my social media accounts and things I have 
put right there in links and fancy scripting things. Uh, I also have my schedule there if you would like to check out at what times these things happen. So yeah, hope you had a nice broadcast. To me it was very good. I'll see you tomorrow. Black!